Today, I'm coming to you with some winter lawn care no-nos. In this video, I'm going to share with you six big time mistakes that lots of people make in their lawns during the winter, or at least they're tempted to. One of the first stumbling blocks that lots of people make in the lawn during the winter is they find themselves bored in the month of January, and it happens to be a somewhat warm day, and they walk the lawn and they find random winter weeds. The mistake is when you go into your garage and you grab a weed killer and go to kill it. If you walk with me up the hill, you'll see lots of dormant grass. But when you look close, you'll find tons of green weeds. It would be a mistake to go pull any weed killer out and try to kill those now, mostly because it's just too cold. The simple fact of the matter is, the vast majority of weeds and weed killing products are designed to work in warmer weather. So although the plant, the weed looks like it's growing and it seems like to be a nice day, chemically speaking, the plant is not going to absorb the weed killer the way it's supposed to, and it's not going to react the way it's supposed to. So once you understand that, then obviously the temptation is to think, well, maybe I got some weeds in the lawn now. Let's go rifle around in the garage, find my spreader if I have one, find some random uh, weed preventer if I have one, and go put it on the lawn now. It's called a pre-emergent for those of you um, that don't know. All right, so there you go. You find your spreader, you dust it off, you find a bag of a weed preventer, or maybe you go buy one. You have to apply it in the spring to prevent crabgrass and other stuff, and you have to apply it in the fall to prevent poa annua and other things. There's a big reason to do that, because many of these weeds, let's talk about poa here, that is an annual bluegrass, and it germinates in the fall. So you have to put the pre-emergent down in the fall so that it won't germinate. Then that annual grass goes dormant through the winter, and then it flowers in the spring. It's one of the first things that comes up in the spring. You can't prevent that in the winter because it has already germinated. Now, conversely, you can't put a pre-emergent down in the month of January, let's say, uh, to prevent weeds that germinate in the spring and you know flourish in the summer because the product does not work on seeds that aren't ready to germinate these products are going to prevent seeds from germinating when the soil temperatures are uh, perfect for those seeds to germinate basically the weather is preventing it from germinating in the middle of the winter your product is not so once soil temperatures come back up in the spring the seeds will still germinate and you'll still get weeds. There's no point in putting down a weed pre-emergent in the middle of December. Now that we've talked about why we don't attempt to kill weeds in the winter, nor do we attempt to prevent weeds in the winter, since we're staring at that spreader over there, the next biggest temptation usually is on those warmer winter days when you just want to get a jump start on spring. The temptation is to put some fertilizer in that spreader and throw it on the lawn. See if we can get that lawn going early. This is another big mistake because, for the most part, fertilizers are heavy in nitrogen and the grass is still dormant. For the most part, especially in those northern climates, like where I live, the ground is frozen. So if you put down product, it will just sit there and eventually it will leach off somewhere when the snow melts. The only real product, or let's say macronutrient, that's kind of safe is potassium. But potassium actually has the ability to get absorbed into the root system of plants even during cold weather, but it's not very efficient and it's hard to find over-the-counter products uh, in the month of January that are just straight up potassium. It's still best just simply to wait until winter is over. This fourth mistake that lawn owners make during the winter applies mostly to people who live where it snows somewhat regularly and stays very cold pretty regularly. You see back here behind me, it's cold enough that it's just not melting off. Uh, we get enough shade from this little tree up here that it just kind of sits here. Here's the mistake. When we live in climates that are super cold, especially those climates that are damp, if we don't cut the grass short for the winter, these areas that are consistently damp and pressed down by the weight of snow and maybe ice, these areas are prone to fungal infections uh, as spring is starting. Snow mold is the most common fungal infection. It's not particularly horrible, but we don't really want it because that is going to slow the progress of our lawn in the 
early parts of spring. So the reason I bring this up, let's say it's the middle of winter, uh, January, maybe even early February, maybe the end of December. If you have not cut your grass short and you happen to have a warm enough day where the grass is not like crispy and frozen and frosty, pull your lawnmower out and cut it back, maybe bag it. But the point is to get that grass short if you haven't gotten it short already. Now, you don't want to scalp it down to the ground or anything like that, but you don't want excessive growth sitting on top. You don't want the grass blades up like this and then flopping over under the weight of snow because that's where the fungal infection starts. The fifth mistake that people make when they're dealing with their lawns throughout the winter really has to do with high traffic areas of their lawn and not realizing that the damage that you can do to a lawn in the middle of the winter when it's frosty out, when you're walking all over it. There's my dogs right there. When they're not in the kennel and they're not in the garage, I walk them from the kennel to the garage. Now, of course, they do spend some time in the yard as well. But this little area right here, going from my door across the grass to the kennel door, is always a little bit matted down. If you go back, let's say you're a subscriber and you've watched a lot of the videos, you literally can look at this area in the background of those videos and see that this spot in my yard never looks lush. It doesn't matter how much fertilizer or care I put to that area, it never really grows thick, simply because through the whole winter, every single year, I'm always trampling this spot. Areas of the yard that you don't trample throughout the winter especially in the early morning when the frost is on the ground, don't get damaged at the crown level. And as it gets stepped on, it kind of crumples because it's not thawed, it's frozen, it's frosty. The damage to that doesn't kill the grass in my situation because I'm not constantly trampling all over it every day. I really just go back and forth on the same spot a few times a day, but the, you can already see the damage and it lasts throughout the entire year. All right, mistake number six has to do with trees. Most of us like raking. I mean, I say like in air quotes. We love raking up leaves and pine needles in the fall. And look at this. I raked for a month straight and there's still stuff here all along the fence line. This is one of the biggest mistakes that almost everyone, like seriously, almost everyone makes this mistake. Once we're done bagging up our last bag of leaves, we just forget about the leaves. The problem is every tree that I've ever seen always holds on to a handful of leaves well into winter and slowly drops them on the ground. The wind blows them around. They all get stuck here in the fence line. And look at this little spot on my lawn. I am not immune to this problem either. When you let leaves pile up along your fence line, things die. The month of January and the month of February really are probably the best times on whatever random warm dry day that you have to come out, grab your rake, and clean up the rest of the leaves that are still there. Now, of course, bare spots can be repaired. Pick up those leaves come April, you can fix the spot. But if we can prevent the problem, then that's the best solution of them all. All right, those are all six mistakes. Now that you know them, don't make those mistakes yourself. Tell your neighbor about them too. As spring comes, you're gonna to wanna to start working on your lawn to make it look its best. I've got a guide already published here on the channel about repairing your lawn for free or essentially free. It's a zero cost lawn care guide. I'll, I'll have a link to it very prominent here. I'm also in the production stages of a full spring lawn care guide specific to spring. So as winter's coming to an end, it's going to be applicable to you watching this video right now. 